and I probably should say that's usually the question that gets me into trouble because if someone really asks me what I think about something, I'm not afraid to share that, what I think. Now what I know is a different story because see what I know determines what I think because I've been all my life, I guess you could say, God decided that he wanted me in a certain way so he chose me to learn certain things along the way by dramatic experiences. One of them being in hospital beds, dying, and being told I wouldn't survive, and then surviving. <laughs> so sometimes it's interesting to me because I don't look at circumstances the same way sometimes that other people do. Like someone will say, well, what do you think about, say, a stock market crash? And I'll say, well, it happened. Or they'll say, what do you think about 9-11 or some catastrophe that happened? And I'll say, well, it happened. And they'll be dissatisfied with that answer. They'll go, well, no, what did you, what did you feel? Where were you at at that time? And I'll say, I don't know. They go, well, didn't it affect you? And I'll say, not really. I said, the things that affect me, that cause me to be made aware or inflamed or impassioned are the things that God directs my heart towards. Like when I know, I know that he is taking care of someone or something, I don't worry about them. If I prayed for God to take care of those that were in that crisis, then I expect God to do it. If I know that my loved one is saved and they die, I don't sweat it because I know I'll see them. If I know that God is God, then my reactions at first might be whatever I'm feeling at the moment, but because I know God, He controls the reactions that I have so that my actions could be one of comforting others that may not know God is in control and God allows things to happen for a reason and a purpose and there is a design behind all these happenstance that people think are just catastrophes. I don't see them as a catastrophe. I see them as an awareness that God does have a purpose in all these things and that his design was incorporated in knowing that this was going to happen. So since it did happen, God already knows what the results are. So like I said, sometimes people just don't want to know what I'm thinking, but they want to know what I know. What do you know? Did you know that God is in control? Did you know that every moment of your life, every hair on your head, every step you make, every choice you take is all in and with God in you? Because if you're born again, that is the truth. Oh, there may be facts around you that cause you to cry, to hurt, to bleed, to suffer, to even die. But in eternity, when you arrive in God's presence, you'll forget all about what happened here today and yesterday, much less tomorrow. So today, as we walk with God and as we talk with Him and share with Him, we would be better off knowing what He knows so we can go forward than to worry about what we think we understand about the circumstances we're in. Today, in Streams in the Desert, is, I ask, from 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It had pleased God to remove my youngest child under the circumstances of peculiar trial and pain. And as I had just laid my little one's body in the churchyard, in the grave, on return home, I felt my duty to preach to my people on the meaning of trials. Finding that this text was in the lesson for the following message, I chose it as my master's words to them and myself. But on trying to prepare the notes, I found that in honesty, I could not say that the words were true. And therefore, I knelt down and asked God to let his grace be sufficient for me. While I was thus pleading, I opened my eyes and saw a framed, it looked as though, illuminated text, which my mother had given me only a few days before, which I had told my 
friend to place upon the wall during my absence at the holiday resort where my little one was taken away from us. I did not notice the words on returning to my house, but as I looked up and wiped my, e my eyes, the words met my gaze, my grace is sufficient for thee. The is was picked out in bright green while the my and thee were painted in another color. She had taken a pen and done so. In one moment the message came straight to my soul as a rebuke for offering such a prayer as, Lord, let thy grace be sufficient for me. For the word and the answer was almost as an audible voice saying, How dare you ask that which already is? God cannot make it any more sufficient than he has made it. Get up and believe it, and you will find it true. Because the Lord says it in the most simplest of ways, My grace is sufficient for thee, not shall be, or may be, or when you feel like it. My, is, and thee were from that moment, I hope, indelibly fixed upon my heart. And I thank God, having been trying to live in the reality of the message from that day forward to the present time. The lesson that came to me, and which I seek to convey to others, is never turn God's facts into hope or prayers, but simply use them as a reality, and you will find them powerful as you believe them. For me, it was simple. I never had the choice when I was dying to make a decision one way or the other or how I felt about it. I had to know that God would take care of me all the way through the years that I suffered and nearly died. Because you see, when you stay in a hospital for a week, then you recover. When you stay for two weeks, you can recover. When you stay for a month, you get a little bit kind of concerned about how much you're in there. When you're in there for months after months at a time, like I was, you can become institutionalized. And at that point in time, it's almost better that you want to be inside than in the real world on the outside. Now, looking at me today, you would wonder, what? Are you kidding me? No. You see, God wanted me to know that not only is his grace sufficient for me, but his person was all I could cling to. And sometimes all you have is Jesus. But there's also times when you know that all you need is him. And when you find that out, then the rest of the world and all the turmoil it goes through and the throwing up of the hands and the crashing down of the world systems and things and kingdoms and people and places and even in your own life how things may come and go and you might say you know the Lord giveth the Lord taketh away but the real truth is his love is sufficient for you because his love is grace and what comes into your world and into your life was delivered especially by him for you to understand to grow and to know that he is with you always and that when and if someone near you or someone far from you or you yourself die God has him as the apple of his eye and he has done everything he can to save them if they are not or to bring them home as he has chosen to so don't let anything affect you it's a piece of cake sort of as long as you know his grace is sufficient for me and for you.